Good morning traders, this is your day trade setup for the Aussie for today. So I didn't trade much yesterday, pretty much only sat down at uh, just before 6 and managed to get a, a small trade on the Dow, um, which is very, very small, as you can see, I think it was like 34 Rand or something that we made. But anyway, um, that's how it goes sometimes. So for me at the moment, there, there's two things here that are happening. So the Aussie is at a weekly level, which is this 48339, uh, and then I have the weekly 200 EMA here, uh, which is 48247. I'm expecting some kind of buying action happening around this, okay, but there could also be a quite a volatile break through that, and I'm going to just I'll run through that with you now. So there is something else that I want to just highlight, so that was my original trend line there which we've broken through and that was my wedge okay now just from a price action perspective we're off a level I could expect buyers coming in off this level to drive it back into the wedge bounce off the wedge bounce down and then have a pretty volatile break to the upside okay so that's the one side of it um, the second side of it is I could right now have, this could be a wedge break to the downside. It's not a perfect wedge on the daily, so we've got one, two, three, four touches. You're looking for, you know, th technically three is, three touches is more than enough because it's it's actually a triangle more than a wedge, but, you know, three touches makes up a triangle. Triangle's got three sides. So what you do have is you do have some structure here and it's broken the structure to the downside, which also can indicate a pretty volatile move which is basically the height of the wedge to the downside. Okay, now this area here of 48.339 and 48.247 is fairly significant because it's a weekly level. Okay, so now if I start coming to the lower time frames, you'll see what I mean here. So you can see that's the bottom of the wedge, reject it, reject it, and we move down. Okay, and that's pretty much for most of the week. Trend is down. We know the trend is down. So we should be looking for shorts all the time. This level here is just very significant to me. So I would prefer to see a bit of a bounce before getting back in for a retest of this level. Okay, so this to me is a buying area at, let's just say, at you know 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon, this was a buying area. Not that I wanted to buy last night, but it's something which I need to look at. Now, if we look at the the one hour, you can see we have the start of a bit of a rounding bottom here. Um, trend is still down. There's no structure or price action here that's indicating that that is a bottom. Okay, so now, looking at the markets at the moment. So yesterday we had the Dow down 1%. Uh, we had the S&P down 0.6%. And the Nasdaq down 0.6 percent. Ten cent right now is down 0.88 percent. Okay, so the question that we should have is: Are we going to get a gap down? And if we do get a gap down, I'm still looking for an opportunity to buy. The reason being, this level will get tested on the low time frame. Pretty much guaranteed, it will get tested immediately. Um, whatever gap down we do get could turn out to be some kind of an island reversal. Okay, we may also open flat. So, Hong Kong is getting fairly strong. Um, Rand dollar, 1464. And oil is up 0.75% at the moment. So, yeah, we could open flat and then this level will play out. So for me at the moment, no real trade until I see some structure happen and at this stage there's no structure so if I take the half hour this fractal here that I'm waiting for a break it will be above the teeth so it could signal an entry I don't have anything else don't have a wise man one more one or anything here that's not really a wise man number one but you can see this is an indication of bias scaling in here okay Okay, and the reason I say that is it moves up, 
and then the sellers try to drive it down and they don't get very far and then buyers come back in and the sellers keep driving it down and the buyers come in and they drive it down and the buyers come in and the buyers were coming in at the close. We could argue it was profit taking of the shorts because they saw the structure and said, okay, I'm getting out of this because it doesn't look very promising. We've had a crossover here. But this fractional level is still key and then these levels to the downside are still very key. Okay. So I'm kind of sitting on my hands until I see some confirmation of either a move through this level and then I'm definitely looking for the next uh, probably daily or even four hour level and there are a couple of tails inside here. Okay, but if I'd somehow doubt it. I mean, you can look at the, the structure, look at how it was used as resistance here, used as support here, um, used as confusion here, used as support here, and now what are we doing? I suspect we're going to use it as support again. Okay, so that's kind of my view on this at the moment. And if we just switch across to the Ichimoku and quickly run through that. So yes, we've had this downward trend for two days. A um, bit of confusion at the moment. Uh, for everything, when it's flat like this, flat cloud, we're ranging, which I think is fairly visible at the moment. Um, half hour, trend is still down. Everything is still down. One hour, trend is still down. We've got a bit of diversions here between Keys and Dickinson, so you would expect some kind of a pullback. There is a trend break here. That's happened. There it is there. Okay, uh, trend is still down. Everything is down at the moment. But remember, this is a lagging indicator as well. And the daily, we've got a crossover. We've broken through the cloud. We've got a twist. Everything is bearish. But I want to be short from a higher, sort of from a cloud here or something like that. I don't really want to be chasing shorts down here. Okay, because if I'm chasing shorts down here, my stop's got to be above. Uh, Tekinson at least, which is up the top here. So, yeah, that kind of thing. You're looking for the 2,200 point stop loss. And if you look at price action, there is a there is a fairly good chance that this is going to turn into a bigger range. Okay, and the range. If I look on the weekly or just tie it up on the monthly, you can look at how this range has been playing over the last two years. Okay, so that's my view for today anyway. it's um, I do suspect we're going to have some kind of a, a rally here. Uh, if it's not here, it's going to be in this area. And when I say in this area, we probably you can go down. Let's just get some levels in. There's one there. I suppose that would also be one there. Okay. So we add a weekly level, but remember the weekly level is based on the weekly close. So we could still move down and then move up and close above it, and we'll have a, a pin bar here. So from where we are, there's still 890 points. Oh, sorry, call it 800 points. There's still 800 points moves to the downside that can materialize. Um, but these levels are fairly, uh, they're fairly well structured. So I think you're going to need to keep your wits about you. And if we do get a break to the downside, keep a tight stop and then take profit on these levels. Don't try and, don't try and assume we're going to break through these levels. This level that we at here is a weekly level and I'm expecting, I really am expecting it to be defended on the weekly chart. So, we could still get an 800 point tail for the week that's that's not uncommon but um, for me i'm looking for areas here to buy i think this is looking like a turning point right now but we're going to wait and see just be patient and wait for the structure to form once structure is formed and you start creating newer highs on the lower time frames 12 15 minute chart then you can start looking for an entry and just expect to be um Let's not say burnt because you're going to keep your stops uh, fairly tight and you're going to move your stop to entry as quick as possible.
but expect it to be sort of volatile and up and down, up and down until we start breaking through the clouds. Okay. Um, and the last thing that you need to just pay attention to is use the Bull Williams because this is going to give you the early indication of the trend change. The Ichimoku is a lagging indicator and it's going to take a little bit of time. So if you look at this on the 12 minutes, I've had a structure break. I'm looking for a retest of this environment. So this tail here is my stop area. Okay, and that's pretty much if I'm getting it along up there. Now it's 180, 200 point stop loss, which is a lot more palatable. Okay. Okay, guys, so I think that's it for me today. Um, trend is down, definitely down, so you should be looking for shorts, but not at this level. I want to see a bit of a rally. So I think this is a good opportunity for me to start looking for opportunities to buy. Okay. Anyway, guys, hope that helps, and I'll catch you later. Cheers for now.